and the Spirit of God falls upon that group that he preached to. And they began to speak in languages that they had never learned. This was the second time that this has happened in the house of Cornelius. So here it's Gentiles. The first time they were all Jews. Now, here they were all Gentiles. Now we go on. They did not pray for tongues in the house of Cornelius. They did not ask for tongues. They did not desire tongues. It was a sovereign act of God for a definite purpose. This event represents the giving of the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles because Peter did not believe that God would save a Gentile. That's why he had been taught in the Old Testament not to eat with Gentiles. But God now has changed things. God has now opened the door to the Gentile. So the Gentile now can also be saved. And these tongues were assigned to Peter, the other six Jews that were with him, that God was now dealing with Gentiles. You see, they believed as Jews that only Jews could be saved. Now God is showing Peter that he's also going to save Gentiles. He's going to give the gospel that the Jew had also to the Gentile. Now the third instance, the first one at Jerusalem, the second one at the house of Cornelius, and the third instance is there were 12 men in Ephesus who claimed to be disciples of John. They weren't even saved. And when Paul came among them, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we've never even heard of the Holy Spirit. Now, first of all, they claimed to be followers of John the Baptist. They had never been baptized by John the Baptist, and they had never been around John the Baptist. Somebody had come along and told them this and went on, and so they thought they were followers of John the Baptist. But Paul evidenced by looking and talking with them that they knew nothing about the Lord. They knew nothing about salvation. So he said, well, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said, we've never even heard of Him. Well, John the Baptist preached the Holy Spirit. And John the Baptist preached Jesus. They had never heard of either one. And so, Paul laid his hands on them, and the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they prophesied and spake with tongues. Now, this is the third instance, and the only instances. Why, we would ask, are tongues not mentioned elsewhere? With the exception of the abuse of tongues at Corinth, there is not one single instance of the gift of tongues anywhere in the whole Bible. Let me show you. At one time, 1 Corinthians was written in 57 A.D. There were only four New Testament books that had been written during the time Paul wrote Corinthians. They were Matthew, Mark, 1 and 2 Thessalonians. Only two books out of the 27 New Testament books even mention the gift of tongues. The book of Acts was written in A.D. 65, and it only mentions tongues three times. Romans, 2 Corinthians, and Galatians was written in 60 A.D. with no mention of tongues. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, written in 64 A.D., no mention of tongues. 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus, written at an unknown date, no mention of tongues. Philemon, written in 64 A.D., no mention of tongues. The book of Hebrews, written 70 A.D., no mention of tongues. The book of James, 62 A.D., no mention of tongues. 1st Peter, 60 A.D., no mention of tongues. 2nd Peter, 66 A.D., no mention of tongues in any of those books. 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, written in 90 A.D., no mention of tongues. Jude, written in 66 A.D., no mention of tongues. The book of Revelation, written in 96 A.D., no mention of tongues. Of the 27 books of the New Testament, only two mention tongues. If tongues were to be continued, surely some of those inspired epistles would have said something about tongues. But there's not a word. It is as silent as a Christian scientist in a graveyard. Not a word. What's the importance of tongues? 
The gift of tongues was meant to be a temporary gift which God would dis dissolve and set aside after the New Testament was written. After the completion of the New Testament, there was no more need for tongues or special knowledge for the church because they had the New Testament to guide them, which before they did not have. Now, if you will look at the, your bulletin, you'll notice it says in your bulletin, the text we read, love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. That doesn't mean something that God prophesied will fail to come to pass. It means He will no longer be given these supernatural prophecies to guide the early church. They won't need it because they've got the New Testament to guide them. And whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Word is poel, to come to a complete stop. And in the Greek, it's in the middle voice, which means that they themselves no longer have this gift. It's like they're like a battery that has run down. There's no more, no more gift there. He also says that when that which is in part shall be done away, that which that which is in part shall be done away, reduced to inactivity. And he also tells us that prophecy in part will be done away. So the importance of tongues. The gift of tongues was a temporary gift. Now, no one can revive that temporary gift today. God could if He wanted to, but He doesn't. Those who claim to have this gift do not have it. That's just the, the, the full content of it. They don't have it. What they have is something I would not want. I would not want to yield my mind over to some power or some spirit. I would not want to do that. The Bible says God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. You better keep control of your mind. Don't ever turn your mind over to anything or anyone except the Word of God. In the spiritual realm, that's a dangerous thing to do. People ask me, is it okay to practice yoga? No, it is not. Don't yield your meditation and your mind to these things. It's dangerous. By the way, there are two lists of temporary gifts in 1 Corinthians. Two lists. These were the early lists. But the later lists... There are two more found in Ephesians and Romans. And in these two later gifts, there is no mention whatsoever of tongues. No mention. And when you go to Galatians chapter 5, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness. And He gives the ninefold fruit of the Spirit. And, and they are actually a picture of the life of Christ. And the gift of the Spirit to you and I is to exhibit these gifts. Love, joy, peace, meekness, long-suffering. But did you know that this list in Galatians 5 that tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is does not mention tongues. It's not a fruit of the Spirit. Now, it's preached in these churches that this is the gift of the Holy Spirit and you must have it. It is not listed as a gift as the fruit of the Spirit. Not at all. No mention of it. Even in 1 Corinthians 12, where tongues are mentioned, they're at the bottom of both lists, which show their importance was minor even at the time it was given. Now, we come to the ceasing of tongues. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Quail, come to a complete stop. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Charity or love never faileth. 
But whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Tongues shall cease. Knowledge shall vanish away. That is this gift of knowledge. Supernatural knowledge. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Now he says, when that which is perfect is come, that which was temporary will be done away. Well, what is that perfect thing that's going to come which will cause the gifts to be done away? I know of one thing in this world is perfect, and that's the Word of God. The Bible says the Word of the Lord is perfect. It is pure. And therefore, he is saying, when the Scriptures are completed, then those temporary gifts will be withdrawn. And they had. I'd like to point out something here. None of the great preachers of America, Germany, and other nations, none of the great preachers or missionaries spoke in tongues. Isn't that an amazing thing? If tongues were for us today, don't you think God would give it to His choice men? Men that have surrendered their lives to Christ and who have given their lives over to preaching the gospel, wouldn't God give them the gift of tongues? Not one of them had the gift of tongues. You can go down through the list. And I want to show you that in 1800 years, since the founding of the Lord's church, up to this time, except for the last 100 years, there has never been any speaking in tongues. Nobody has ever done it. It was not mentioned in the early, early days after the closing of the apostolic age. In the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th centuries, no mention of tongues. Nobody spoke in tongues. 11, 12, 13, 14, nobody spoke in tongues. For hundreds of years, 1800 years, nobody spoke in tongues. It wasn't in existence. It, nobody had it. If it was a gift that God was giving today, they would have had it. They didn't have it. In fact, Clement of Rome, one of the earliest Christians after the apostles, wrote a letter to the Corinthian church in the year 95, just four decades after Paul wrote 1 Corinthians. And he said, there was no mention of tongues that the use and the misuse of the gift and cease. Clement lived right after the death of the apostles. Justin Martyr, the great church leader in the second century, visited many of the churches of his day, and in his voluminous writings, he mentions nothing about speaking in tongues. It is not even mentioned among his lists of spiritual gifts. Origen, one of the brilliant church scholars who lived in the 3rd century made no mention of tongues. In his polemic against Celsus, he explicitly argues that the sign gifts of the apostolic age were temporary and were not exercised by Christians of his day. Then in 345, there was born a man by the name of Chrysostom. Chrysostom was one of the greatest of the early Christians in the year 345. He was one of the greatest Bible expositors and preachers in the Greek church. And he said concerning spiritual gifts, this whole place is very obscure, but the obscurity is produced by our ignorance of the facts referred to and by their cessation, that's their being stopped, by such as then used to occur, but now no longer take place. Here's a categorical statement by Chrysostom that glossolia, speaking in tongues, had disappeared from the church. He states that tongues and other miraculous gifts had not only ceased, but could not even be accurately defined. They knew nothing about tongues 300 years after, after the... Uh, age of the apostles. Knew nothing about it. Augustine, one of the great theologians of the church said, these were signs adapted to the times for their behoove to be that betokening of the Holy Spirit in all tongues 
to show that the gospel of God was 